Good evening and welcome to uh, BAM's first event of the weekend, um, our online private view of the um, lovely exhibition that you've just been having a, a little bit of a, a preview of, um, our Look Back and Smile, um, which is currently on in the Scottish Borders. Um, and if you tuned in a little bit early, um, you'll have been enjoying a little slideshow and some of that lovely Scottish music, um, which was actually played by um, Sarah Melville, who's our membership secretary. So um, I've just been sitting waiting and enjoying that. Um, so with me tonight, um, I've got Joy Parker, um, who's been the um, lead curator and organizer of the exhibition. Um, and we had hoped that she would be joining us live from the gallery, but um, we've had a few technical Wi-Fi issues, but Joy's got some lovely backgrounds there, haven't you, Joy? Um, I have. <laughs> you, could, you could always pretend that you're, you're live in the gallery there. Yeah, we um, could. Yeah. Um, so before we get started um, in getting into a bit more depth about the exhibition, just a couple of kind of housekeeping things um, for this evening. Um, as we go through, if anybody has any questions, um, there, I think there's a facility for you to do, um, to, to ask questions. Um, I don't see that on my screen, but if, if it is, you can feel free to ask questions. Um, yeah, um, in the, in the Q and A box. Um, the other thing is that at the end of the session, um, when um, when you leave, when you log out, um, a, a survey should pop up just to get a wee bit of feedback um, about your, your views of this evening. So if you could just fill those questions in um, and let us know what you thought of this evening, hopefully it will all be positive. Um, so I think that's all just the, the, uh, the preamble bits that we need to do um, for this evening. Um, we've got a few different videos um, of you know, the overall gallery. We're going to go into a little bit of depth about some of the, the mosaics in the exhibition. Um, but before we get going with those videos, Joy, I'm just going to hand over to you just to tell okay. us a little bit about the, the exhibition, introduce it, because you're, you're the person on the ground there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you very much, Rachel. Yes, thank you very much all for coming. Um, it's, I can't actually see you, but I'm imagining you're all there, um, which is great. Um, yes, the exhibition was supposed to really happen um, in spring last year and at the very last minute it got cancelled um, because of lockdown. I literally had all the work in my studio ready to take to the gallery and we had to cancel it. So we've done it again and hopefully we've learned a few things along the way. Um, but my main thing that I wanted to say to you all today really is just thank you so much for participating. It's a huge space, it's a huge beautiful gallery. Um, and we were a little bit anxious about filling it, but we have filled it. And every time I go into the gallery, I look at it and I think anew what an, what an amazing exhibition it is. So thank you very much, all of you. Um, there's a huge range of work. There's tiny work, there's large work, there's um, figurative work, there's abstract work, there's work that uses traditional materials and then recycled materials. So there's really something for everybody in the um, exhibition and there's been a lot of positive feedback about it. Um, yes, and one of the things that um, I've actually heard said is that it really shows the versatility of the medium of mosaic, which was what I really wanted to achieve from this exhibition. I, I, want, I knew we had these beautiful gallery spaces in the borders um, and I wanted to bring, um, bring mosaics to the borders so to show people what is possible. And so I feel like um, that has been achieved. So thank you again. We're going to um, start with a short video um, taken in the gallery. Again, this was a little bit impromptu. I was hoping that Rona and Rachel were gonna come down and do some filming, but uh, Rachel got COVID. And um, so this film that I had just done because I happened to be in the gallery with a few BAM members is what you're going to see now, but hopefully you'll, you'll enjoy it. And then a bit later on, we're going to look more closely at individual artists and hear about their work. Okay, thank you. Let's, let's hear the introductory video. Thank you. 
The title of our exhibition, Look Back and Smile, comes from Sir Walter Scott's poem, The Bridal of Truman. So now the danger dared at last, look back and smile on perils past. This seemed particularly appropriate looking back on the last 18 months of COVID. It also fits in with Scott's 250th birthday celebrations, taking place this year, particularly in the Scottish borders, where his beautiful home of Abbotsford is, and indeed where the Scott Gallery is, which is hosting this exhibition. Scott is very important to the people of the borders, and there are inscriptions and monuments to him everywhere. Moreover, Scott was very significant in putting Scotland on the map for the rest of the world. Not only did he invent the idea of the historical novel, a genre so popular today, he also celebrated and romanticised Scottish culture and landscape. Much of the kitsch in Scotland derives from his influence, but also he drew attention to the land and its beauty, which had hitherto been seen more as a wasteland. I am delighted that so many band members responded so creatively to Scott's work and have, through Mosaic, helped put Scott himself back into view. Is this the first time you've exhibited? It's not the first time I've exhibited because I was lucky enough to be in the exhibition last year. But this is the first time I've exhibited a piece of sculpture. In fact, it's probably one of the first pieces of sculpture I've made. And this is called Rook. Very nice. And can you tell me a bit about how you made Rook? Well, I was very lucky to go to one of uh, Tamara's polysculpting workshops up in Edinburgh in June this year. And I'd never done polysculpting before. I'm, it's absolutely amazing. I should certainly do it again. So the, the substrate of Rook is entirely made of polystyrene, which I don't think you'd realise from looking at him. And then he has cement and mesh on him. His plumage is made of slate. Um, but he was absolutely fantastic for fun to make and I, I really enjoyed doing the poly sculpting. It was fantastic, so uh, yeah, that was great. Well, he's got plenty of character, so and he's got a nice place in um, what I call Rook Corner. Rook with the crow behind. Covid corner. Crow corner, Covid there, there corner. Is no Corbid corner. There is Corbid corner. Corbid corner. <laughs> oh no. Okay, that joke. <laughs> And uh, you've got um, Doogie's work behind you as well, which um, the lovely grey slate is very um, harmonious with your work, so that's nice. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. So can you just tell me a bit about your piece, Judy, please? So the title is A Head Full of Treasure, Look Back and Smile at Childhood Memories. Um, so the treasure being in the hair, really, uh, and it's uh, a random collection of uh, small ornaments and toys that are from my period of childhood really. Um, so everything from little weight ceramics to uh, Beatrix Potter and uh, Wind in the Willow and Marbles, Gingerbread Men, um, just a random collection of, of, of stuff and um, I tried here to include a a daisy chain, I still love making daisy chains and wear them around my head. And then to give a bit of depth for the, the hair and signify kind of curliness, um, cup handles. So, Marion, I think, um, did you first get involved with Mosaic when you went to Rachel Davies? workshop, is that correct? Yes, Rachel was having an open house uh, a few years back and I found out about it on the last day of it so I shot up to Dunblane from where I lived and um, experienced working with Slate for the very first time and she was so generous in letting in anyone that was interested um, to have a little experience of how to work with Slate, how to put pieces together. And it just, I just loved it. I fell in love with it. Um, I had done a little mosaic work myself before I met Rachel. 
but this really opened my mind and my eyes to what the possibilities were of using materials other than just tile mm -hmm. and glass. And I really love texture. Mm -hmm. And this piece is just full of texture and it's so interesting to look at. You can look at it for quite a long time and see so many different elements in it. And it's just, to me, it's fascinating. She's my mentor. I would love to be able to create something as, as well composed and as well thought out as Rachel does. She just does beautiful, beautiful work. And it's, it makes it even more interesting that it's not on a flat surface. It just gives it a different element to it. It's, um, it's quite spectacular. I think this is probably my favourite piece in the whole exhibition. Yeah, thank you very much, Marion. You're welcome. <laughs> One of my favourite pieces in the exhibition actually. He's really, really cute. I yeah. can't believe the 13 year old did it. It's astonishing. <laughs> um, he, he is cute and he doesn't have any wings and he doesn't look very fierce, which is why I think he's quite no, a friendly dragon. Yeah, yeah, that's right, very friendly dragon. Yes, Justin's very talented. Um, he actually worked out the way to change from one colour to a, another by putting uh, one colour from the next line into the previous one and keep going like that until you change. Colour and he designed all these um, spikes and decided to put a mirror on them. So uh, yes, he's a talented boy. Just uh, needs to needs the opportunity, I suppose. Fabulous. I mean, my sister-in-law has just taken up mosaic making um, recently, and so she'd love a piece like this. Well, she she'd love all the pieces in the <laughs> exhibition, really. But uh, she's done some outside stuff for the garden, and so and, uh, yeah, it's love to show them this. Yeah, well, feel free to take some photographs, thank you. <laughs> it's, it, it looks amazing. But it does look really good in this next bit, and there's been a lot of interest from local people. Good. Coming in and seeing them come, because they've never seen anything quite like it before. Yeah. And I think that's, that's made a bit of, yeah, it just it's turned all turned out phenomenal, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, that was great. Yeah. yeah, no, it's lovely to have that um, that video to give us an impression of kind of the whole the whole gallery. Um, and there you are in Corvid Corner, I see. <laughs> I am indeed, yes. Kate is, Kate is Changing behind the you. as appropriate, <laughs> yeah. And um, I'd love to, I mean, I'd really like to say thank you to Rona Duffy, actually, for putting all that yeah. together. And she edited all the films that we're seeing tonight. Spent a lot, a lot of late nights doing it, I think. So thank you, Rona. Yeah, we very much appreciate that. Yeah, to um, have that editing and, and the video, and and you, Joy, for for stepping up when I can come <laughs> down and um, you know videoing all the the different pieces um, in the gallery. And it's nice to see people enjoying the exhibition as well. To see sort of the visitors there, and I think um, so because the the exhibition has been open um, for a few weeks now, and there's been quite a lot of positive feedback. Um, from visitors, um, you know, experiencing mosaic perhaps for the first time or really sort of seeing the, um, the versatility and the, you know, all the different ways, um, you know, that people can yeah. create things with mosaic. Yeah, it's been great just to have a live um, exhibition, hasn't it? To actually a place where people can actually go, look, chat to each other, um, look around the corners of the mosaics. And uh, yes, it's attracted a, a lot of attention. Yeah, um, so that, that in-person experience of being at, at a mosaic exhibition um, is, yeah, really good. Um, and, but, you know, for those of you that can't can't make it all the way to, to Hoik, uh, this, this is your next best thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I think next, um, Joy, do you want to talk a little bit about this? We've just got... Um, somebody from the gallery to, to talk yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Shona Sinclair is going to talk now. Again, she was going to be talking live from the gallery, 
but in the borders, our network coverage is pretty poor and um, the Wi-Fi in the gallery wasn't working at all. But luckily, actually, it's her son's birthday, so she's been able to go out with her son um, for a meal and I've got a cold, so maybe it all turned out for the best. So, yes, we're just going to hear a few words from Shona Sinclair, the gallery curator. Hello, my name is Shona Sinclair and I'm a curator working with Live Borders Museums, Galleries and Archives. I just want to welcome you here to Scott Gallery and Hoyt Museum to the wonderful BAM Look Back and Smile exhibition. The Scott Gallery has been established since 1975 and we show a wide variety of exhibitions from those with an international and national reputation um, right down to local artists. When uh, Joy Parker and BAM approached us when we were reopening the museum after our long closure due to COVID, I was delighted. Um, we wanted a very accessible exhibition that would bring in a wide range of visitors and appeal to a wide range of people. This has been perfect. Also, the link with the Walter Scott 250 anniversary has been super. Um, it, again, it's given us um, a market and appeal that we can draw more and more visitors in. So thank you again to BAM. I hope you get down here to visit it yourselves um, and hopefully we can welcome you artists again as exhibitors. Thank you. Well, thank you, Shona. <laughs> that was uh, we're, it's a pleasure to have um, been able to exhibit here. So thank you very much um, to Live Borders for uh, making this possible and to you and Richard and all your staff. Um, so I think the next um, the next thing um, on the evening is we're going to show a few short videos, um, which you'll actually be able to see close ups of people's work um, and hear them talking about them. We're going to start with Wilma, and I think you can probably see hers in this in my background picture just here on the plinth. It's called Curiosity, um, and Wilma um, will explain why. It is called Curiosity in more detail soon. And then in the right on the far wall, you can see Katie Galbraith's um, mosaic of Abbotsford House, which is where Scott lived. And she's got the prime position on the far wall with all her little birds around it. So, um, but yeah, I think and we, we were, when we were talking about which which pieces, because there's so many pieces in the exhibition, it was so hard to kind of pick a few, you know, just for this evening um, to, you know, to, to show you and to, to talk about. Um, but when we were discussing it, um, mo the mosaics kind of responded, uh, people responded to the, you know, the look back and smile um, theme in different ways. And these two in particular um, kind of responded to Abbotsford, or were inspired by Abbotsford House, which is where Scott's, um, Scott's, Scott Scott is home. Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of why we, we, we've got these two to, to start off with, I think, isn't it, Joy? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was very pleased that people responded. It was a hard subject to respond to um, and people responded in many different ways. And uh, yeah, here are two, two good examples. And yes, I'm, I'm also sorry, you know, we can't show everybody's work. Um, I, I do understand that we've got almost a hundred pieces of work in the gallery because some are absolutely tiny and we've also got some craft items as well for sale. So if your pieces of work and you don't see them, I'm really, really sorry, but they're still being appreciated and enjoyed by everybody who comes to the exhibition. Very much so, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Okay, should we take a look in a little bit more detail at some of these, um, that these two pieces anyway? My original idea was to do a triptych based on the Fair Maid of Perth novel, as I live in Perthshire. However, that didn't stimulate me enough to get going on the mosaic. I also read Ivanhoe in the hope that it would trigger an idea, but that didn't happen either. And researching online for inspiration, I came across the website of Abbotsford House, the home of Sir Walter Scott, with lots of information about how the house was created in, to his interpretation. He was also very involved in creating his garden rooms. My actual starting point for the mosaic was finding the frame. I like working in a circular or curved frame rather than a square or rectangle, giving it a slightly more organic feel. I trolled the online selling sites for a second-hand mirror and finally found this art-shaped one in Perth through a private sale. I have used Weddy board for my substrate, which works well within the mirror frame. 
I wanted to do the actual house in great detail, really trying to represent it as accurately as possible using a variety of recycled materials, including a fair amount of stoneware. The technique used for the house and wall involved laying out the photograph with sticky back plastic on top, sticky side up, then applying the tesserae to the plastic. This allowed me to get a considerable level of detail with tiny pieces and by using the super sticky tile transfer tape on the top surface to hold it together, it brings all of the pieces of disparate depth to the top height, more or less. I did keep the wall and the arched gate and the line of the actual grass path according to the photograph that I had. However, the actual flower borders are from my own imagination. The flowers are generally made from broken china. In fact, quite a lot of the yellows and oranges came from my box of ceramic scraps rather than from complete plates and generally represent a cottage-style herbaceous border. The centre of my flowers are made from bits of glass fused into nuggets, and as I don't really know what I'm doing with my glass kiln, they're generally happy accidents. The leaves in the tree are made from wine bottle glass. The sky is blue woods china, a part tea set originally belonging to a women's rural institute, and subsequently given to me after I gave a talk to them. In terms of design, I tend to have a broad idea in my head for example, where the house is going to be placed, where the path moves diagonally across the surface, and where the higher, larger flowers should be compared to the smaller flowers. I tend to work fairly intuitively in developing the mosaic, working with a variety of materials that I have to hand and allowing the piece to evolve, rather than having it all planned in advance. I really enjoyed making this mosaic, and it's been great to be challenged by an exhibition piece once again. The initial idea for curiosity came to me while watching a documentary about the fascinating objects that Sir Walter Scott collected over the years and placed in his curiosity cabinet in the library at Abbotsford House. I asked myself the question, what would be the contents of my cabinet? Would I attempt to make one? It is then that my eye caught the bottle with ostrich egg fragments on the shelf in my studio. It's an artwork from 1995 with a curious story of its own. I designed the cabinet around the size and shape of this artwork. I developed the design by taking cardboard and making it into different three-dimensional shapes until I was happy with one. During this process, I referred back to furniture and interiors at Abbotsford House. Initially, I thought to mosaic the inside of the cabinet with some of the beautiful wallpaper patterns but I realized that it would visually interfere with its content. After reading more about Sir Walter Scott and his fascination with mirrors, I decided to emphasize the idea of the inside and the outside of the cabinet. Inspired by the glass of the bottle and the eggshell shards, I decided to also emphasize the contrast between the organic materials with layers of time in them and the technological elusive material of mirrored glass that reflects and tricks. Before making the cabinet out of MDF wood with the help of a friend, I sized up all the materials that I wanted to use and I carefully thought out the sequence of steps I needed to take. For instance, I made holes in the roof of the cabinet to light up the artwork inside. This meant that I had to mosaic around the holes on the inside of the ceiling. To make it more accessible, I kept the roof separate until I had mosaiced and grouted the ceiling before attaching it to the three walls of the wooden structure. The shape of the dark frame on the front of the cabinet is inspired by the decorative feature of the fireplace in the entrance hall of Abbotsford House. The imitation slate of the frame is a playful reference to Sir Walter Scott's use of medieval reproductions. The frame is made of black milliput and I had attached it to the front after attaching the mirrors on the inside but before mosaicing the outside of the cabinet. The composition of the mosaic on the outside was designed around the larger metal pieces for which I screwed in small supports to carry the weight of each piece. 
These supports became an integral part of the mosaic flow later. The circular shapes of the mirror mosaics around the light holes on the inside of the cabinet are reflected in the circular shapes of the mixed media mosaic on the outside. This includes a range of objects and fragments of materials collected recently from beaches in Scotland, as well as objects from my childhood. The cabinet in itself becomes the curiosity, hence the title, Curiosity. Well, that was great. Yeah, no, I, I love the um, the fact that we've got the the artists talking about their their work and their processes. It's really interesting to see, you know, from from the inspiration, the ideas to how they figured out how they were actually going to do it um, to seeing the final piece. Um, yeah, and I hope that actually those two will inspire some of you to actually visit Abbotsford and see what the curiosities and uh, and the actual building is like. You know, well, I'm intrigued what to about. know what Scott's yeah. got in his curiosity cabinet now. I want yeah. to know what else is there. Yeah. Um, so I think the next two, we've got a couple more coming up, and these are also inspired directly by Scott, but this time it's his writings. They're inspired by two of his I thought, I thought it was interesting when Katie quotes. said as well that she, she looked at the writing, um, but wasn't inspired <laughs> by the writing, and she yeah. went for Abbotsford House, whereas the ones that we're, we're going on to have been inspired by the writing. So, yeah. you know, people take their, their inspiration from, um, from different places. Yeah, no, that's, that's very interesting. It's the fact that he was actually um, a multi-talented talented man himself, I think, and he's got lots of different um, aspects that one could research, but uh, because it's not contemporary, it makes it all that harder to actually reach back in time. And I, for one, my history is, is not great. But um, yes, yeah, so these two are, are looking at the long poems, The Lady of the Lake, Sarah is looking at, and I think you can just see it just behind see me, right in the corner. corner. Um, and you can't see uh, Rosie Lloyd's um, Roke be, um, Storm, um, because it's on the other side of the gallery, but both these artists have responded to, um, to the narrative poems. And so they'll tell you everything there is to know about that. Um, and just before, I think you you were saying um, in the in the promotional material for the um, for the exhibition, I think there were there was a quite nice kind of um, comparison between the way Scott kind of used words. You, you describe it better than me. Oh um, yeah, actually, yes, that's right. It's actually um, Katie Jackson who wrote the blurb for um, uh, the exhibition, and she said that Scott used words to conjure up whole world world worlds. Um, just as we use tiny little mosaic pieces to conjure up whole worlds. And I think um, these two artists definitely have. I mean, Sarah's created a whole island um, <laughs> with story and everything else. So um, I think that was quite a good analogy. Yeah, thank you for remembering that, um, Rachel. That's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, should we, should we take a look at those videos and, and have a look at these two pieces of work as well then? When I got the notice calling for contributions to the exhibition, I thought, I can't do that, I haven't got time. Then I reflected and thought I ought to try. I looked on the internet and saw Thomas Stoddart's design for the cover of Rokeby. It immediately appealed. It had a wonderful castle on a hill, trees and water. I had just finished a mosaic using shades of blue and green marble, so I knew I had the materials. Then I thought I'd better read the novel, otherwise I might miss something important. I downloaded the complete works of Sir Walter Scott onto my Kindle, which took a surprisingly long time. Rugby is a narrative poem, and for current tastes, not an easy read. But well worth it for the story it tells of foul treachery, lies and deceit. It starts on a stormy night in the castle of the Baddie, which is Barnard Castle, high above the River Tees in County Durham. Once I knew that, I looked up pictures of the castle as it is today. Rugby itself is a grand house close to Barnard Castle, where Sir Walter Scott often stayed with friends. It too features in the novel. The mosaic is made in marble with just a tiny bit of slate. I use a hammer and hardy and then nippers. I started with the castle, I worked quite slowly and only a few hours a day, so that took me about a week. The sky was finished last. 
The final step is the application of beaten egg white and then a rub with a cloth to bring out the colours. I completed the mosaic only a few days before the deadline for submission. I didn't have time to become familiar with the finished work, but I hope it captures some of the magic, mystery and romance that characterises Sir Walter Scott's writing. I wanted to create something specifically for this exhibition and I remembered that Scott's poem, The Lady of the Lake, was set in Loch Lomond in the Trossachs National Park. And this really seemed to fit well with the fact that um, I used to work there in the conservation team as landscape advisor. And so I could indeed look back and smile at my time working there. Ellen's Isle, or Elan Moloch, Moloch meaning rugged in Gaelic, is one of the islands in Loch Katrin, and it forms a key view um, in the National Park. It was here the poem, in the poem that the Earl of Baldwell and his daughter Ellen took refuge from invaders. And Scott describes the island as rugged, having a steep promontory, that beach being very mysterious and having lovely characterful weeping willows and oaks, amongst other details of moss and lichen, stuff that I really love to portray. And in the Romantic period, Scott's writing inspired so many artists and photographers to portray the island. Um, so I had a, a have vision of creating this rugged island sculpture with, with these dark out, rock outcrops and a dense wooden canopy with a lonesome Scots pine in the top with some heather around it. So I set about making, firstly, the, the substrate, which I um, used eco bricks. Um, thank you to Helen Knott for the inspiration. And I stacked a few on some on a piece of weddy board, and then I used lead, leftover weddy offcuts, kind of intuitively, to create an interesting topography. Um, and then I covered it all with chicken wire and layers of adhesive soaked mesh. I, was, I began the mosaic making by. Um, making the scenery first and I wanted to capture the details of the individual trees uh, which were so important to the poem and it describes the landscape character of the island. I experimented using lots of my sea glass supplies, uh, making the trees as I said and using bottle edges and bases which I thought made excellent tree canopies. I was able to get, get some stained glass offcuts from my brother um, and I used other materials such as crushed glass, crash glass, um, and my particular favourite rusted bits of blue car um, that I find on my holidays. And finally I wanted to portray Ellen somehow as the guardian of the strand with her flowing locks secretly floating beneath the island. Um, if you use your imagination you can see her. Well, I just noticed something there actually um, about Sarah's work. I was just thinking um, before Scott um, wrote about Scottish landscape, um, it was just seen as very, you know, just wasteland and not to be enjoyed or not very interesting at all. And here Sarah's taking waste from our current contemporary society and making us look at the landscape again, afresh and anew. Um, so somehow that I, I hadn't actually picked that up before. And I think both those artists really, um, I think they really um, understood Scott's work and um, responded to it and their work resonates with what they've read. So I feel like there's some connections that have been made that maybe wouldn't have been made if we hadn't um, had Scott as our theme. Throwing them that challenge. <laughs> yeah, they certainly <laughs> what, rose. What I, loved about, um, sorry, what I loved about um, Rose's commentary at the beginning as well um, was her initial reaction was like, oh, I can't do that, I haven't got time. And I think a lot of us feel that way sometimes as well when the, you know different opportunities come up, um, whether it's because you haven't got time or you know I haven't got the confidence and things. And I love that Rosa sort of took that you know step back and said, actually, I'm gonna give it a go. Um, and I think quite a few of the artists that we've got in the exhibition um, probably went through that, um, that process yeah. of, um, 
yeah having, having to think a little bit before whether it having the confidence to submit something yeah. um yeah yeah, I'd like to. Yeah, and I'd, I agree about that. The confidence is a major issue, and I think being part of BAM gives us all more confidence. I think um, BAM is a very supportive organisation, and I remember a few years ago submitting something myself to an exhibition, being so worried about it, whether it was getting in, and it cost all this money, and etc. And here I am leading this private view. So I think, <laughs> and your chair. So I think you know it supports people to do more than they think they can. And I think this exhibition yeah. has done the same. It pushes you to do more than what you thought was possible. Um, yeah. And for so, you know we, we as BAM as an organisation, you know, have have different exhibitions, you know, over, over the years, and and some are juried and some are not. Um, and this this particular exhibition is lovely in the fact that it's got pieces from. Um, you know, people who are exhibiting for the first time, um, you know, sort of really pleased to have have their work um, shown. And there's people, you know, at the other end of the spectrum who have exhibited on numerous occasions, have exhibited in other, you know, other countries and things. Um, so it's really nice to to have that mix and have the opportunity for everybody who's who's part of BAM to be able to um, to put their work together like that. Yeah. I think so. Um, and we all learn from seeing each other's work as well. I mean, and bring it all together. You can compare and contrast and you learn, you learn inspired, methods. By just, I think. <laughs> yeah. But also, I mean, by looking at all these different kinds of approaches, you can actually learn, you know, learn how to take your own work forward. I think, think I'll have a bit of that and I'll have a bit of that. Yeah. So, so it's nice having that, such a, a mixed exhibition. <laughs> Yeah, and and that mix of, of wall art and sculptural art because they're quite a yeah. lot of um, you know three D works in the exhibition as well, which I think makes yeah. makes it a little bit more interesting as well. Um, yeah, definitely. So, should we move on to the last two artists? Um, yes, let's. I'm <laughs> one of them behind you still. <laughs> oh, have I forgotten to change the? Uh, That's okay. Because the picture Helen's. behind me. Um, see Helen's behind. Yes. Okay. Um, it's we're going to. It's, Oh yeah, there's Helen um, Helen Miles. I'm getting muddled up because there's Helen, the other Helen, Helen Knox. Helen Knox is also behind you. <laughs> you can see Helen Miles is behind you. Yes, Helen is going to be one of them and also Marion. And these two artists responded in a different way. They didn't take it the um, it so literally. They didn't respond to Scott himself, but we did ask people to respond to the title, Look Back and Smile. And this came from a quote, Look Back and Smile on Peril's Past from another long poem of Scott's called The Bride of Trierman. And this was actually Andy Cow's idea, his inspiration to call it this, because he thought it was very appropriate given the fact that we're looking back on what has been really quite a hard um, 18 months. Um, so we've called it Look Back and Smile. And these two artists have responded to looking back at this last time in quite different ways. Helen with lots of humour and Marion with perhaps a word of caution. Shall we find out what they have to say? Let's let's have a look at their videos, yeah. Some People Just Don't Get It is a mosaic very specifically about COVID and it was made during the lockdown. Um, and I trained in Greece, so I trained in Thessaloniki, which is a UNESCO city famous for its Byzantine mosaics. And this mosaic is very loosely based on um, many of the, the saints that you see in the churches in Thessaloniki. Uh, but this saint has lost his halo, um, as you can see, so his hair is a bit ruffled. And he's wearing a mask on his mouth and not over his nose. So the basic idea was I just wanted to express my frustration at the um, people's refusal to understand the rules or the situation that we were in with COVID. Um, and so many people would go around with their masks half off. And because Byzantine mosaics were made 14, 1500 years ago and have lasted all this time and um, still transmit their messages and their beauty, I wanted to make something which was in a traditional style because it seemed to me that COVID and its implications were going to last um, for a very long time. So I made it using the direct method, um, using tile adhesive, which is um, you basically mix it into a paste and you put a little bit down on the board and then you add um, the tesserae, the pieces, one by one. It's quite a difficult method because you can't see what you're working on because once you put the black paste down, 
you're covering the design. Um, so I did both, I made this mosaic and the uh, Empress Theodora using the same method. And the reason I chose this method was because it gives um, a slightly uneven texture to the, um, to the mosaic, uh, which I feel gives it more kind of life and um, energy than you would if you were creating it completely flat. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak a little bit about the piece that I created for BAM's exhibition Look Back and Smile on Perils Past. Um, for me, that statement represents how our lives, our futures, are affected by past experiences, both good and not so good. Um, our choices and reactions today, even unconsciously, are a reflection of our past. And if we really learn our lives lessons, then we can look back and smile on perils past. Uh, this piece I call Reflective Vision is like my mind's eye, reflecting on the past and looking forward to the future. Uh, for the coloured pieces, I cut the shapes out of weedy type board and used pigmented uh, cement based adhesive and lots of iridescent stained glass and glass tile. So it changes um, as light travels across it from left to right. And thank you, Rachel Davies, for teaching me how to incorporate slate in mosaic. Um, that's why I added slate in this piece to show some contrasting uh, texture. And it also carries the flow of energy through the piece from the past to the present and into the future. And I carried the movement beyond the edge of the eye using the tile adhesive to show the continuous flow of energy. And um, I hope many of you get a chance to come and see the wide variety of work there is at the exhibition. It's The standard is really, really very high, I believe. And uh, thank you. So, oh, you've changed, you've changed your background again, Joy. <laughs> and I have, yes, because um, these two, we actually have been quite successful. Quite a few works of art have been sold, and this by Julie and this by Leslie have both been sold. Um, so I just thought I'd, I'd show you these. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and it's, it's been lovely to see that, you know, quite a few of the pieces in the exhibition have been sold, um, sort of reflecting that people are interested um, in mosaic and having mosaic in their home or their garden or, um, you know, wh wherever they choose to, to put them, um, yeah. which is, it's been, been good. Yeah, it's very, very positive. And there's both sculpture and 2D that have been bought and also some of the smaller items. Um, Judy Reed supplied some kits and a few of those have sold and cards and jewellery. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's been a good, a good exhibition, I think. Uh, I think the gallery would agree and they're happy with our performance. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> So I suppose what's left really is to try and encourage you all to come up here and see the exhibition for real. I know many of you won't be able to, but um, the Borders is a lovely place. I know I'm biased, but um, there's rolling hills, there's lochs, there's four beautiful abbeys. There's Abbotsford itself, which is well worth a visit, and it's on the River, Tre on the River Tweed. Um, <clears throat> there's also the Great Tapestry of Scotland has literally just opened um, this autumn in the borders. Um, so that's well worth a visit showing you the history of Scotland through all sorts of groups, community groups have put together and they've sewed it. Um, and so that's well worth a visit. There's the Tremontium, which has, uh, um, because there was a Roman site here, and I think they even are giving out uh, mosaic kits. I've not actually been yet. Um, so there's plenty to do. And of course, the, the exhibition itself, which is in a park, which is very pleasant, and there's a cafe in the park. So if you can at all possible, make a weekend of it, come up and enjoy it. And, um, I think you, you need a job at first it. information, Joy. You know everything about the area. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, actually, you know what? I have written a book. <laughs> um, uh, my husband and I actually have written a tourist guide to the borders. Oh, so, okay. um, yeah, yeah, but uh, not very good at selling it. That's my problem. <laughs> but um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, it is. It is. I mean, I'm. 
um, I'm a couple of hours away from the borders and um, sort of go, going down to visit is, is a lovely area. And as we said at the beginning, you know, seeing, seeing an exhibition in person um, is, is very different from, from seeing it online and seeing pictures. Um, and it's one of the reasons we've been really pleased to have this exhibition, you know, take place yeah. is that it's nice to be able to get out and see work in, in person again. Yeah. Um, and the local yeah. people have definitely enjoyed it, Rachel. So that's, um, that's you know, yeah. so it's just, brilliant. It brings mosaic to the to the wider public yeah. rather than those of us that are interested in mosaic, just looking at the, <laughs> at the mosaics online. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it's on it's until mid-November, isn't it? Yes, yeah, um, November the 14th. It's on 11 to 4, Thursday to Sunday um, until the no November the 14th. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I think, you know, Joy, Joy mentioned earlier, you know, we've, we've there's, there's been a lot of, of mosaics in this exhibition and you, you've seen maybe from some of the gallery shots, you know, sort of how many pieces there are. Um, and if you do want to see some more piece, some more photos of some of those um, pieces, I mean, there, there's obviously there's the slideshows that um, was on at the, the start of, of this and, you know, will probably be shown again tomorrow. Um, but Joy has also been very good in um, posting on social media a lot of pictures from the exhibition. We need to share some of those over to the BAM social media accounts. But certainly if you want to um, have a look at Joy's Instagram accounts, um, was it Joy A.I. Parker? I think that's right. Um, yeah. The, yeah, I am. Um, I am endeavouring to share all the pieces yeah. So if you if you if you follow Joy, if you go and have a look at Joy's account, you'll see all you know the the, the work from all the different yeah. artists that have um, contributed to the exhibition. Yeah. And you know, on on our on the BAM social media accounts, we'll start kind of putting some of those um, across yeah. a, a few more of those as well, just to um, give everybody a, a flavour of the the real variety um, of work that's there. And if you are actually interested in buying any of the work, you can contact me um, or the gallery directly. Um, I know there have been a couple of people who um, have been interested, who are unable to get to the exhibition. So feel free to contact me. I'll probably put you through to the gallery because I don't know exactly what's been sold and what hasn't been sold. And I can't take your money off you, unfortunately. But it is, it, that is it, that's available to you if you're, if you're interested. Brilliant. Um, is there anything else we need to say about the exhibition, Joy? I mean, we've 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 um, we've given the overview and 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 talked a little bit about some of the pieces, but I think that's yeah. kind of all all we had planned for this evening, isn't it? I think I think that's um, everything. I'd just like exhibition. to thank. Yeah, I'm sorry for interrupting. I'd just like to thank again everybody who contributed um, your pieces because without you, without your artwork, this exhibition would not have been possible. So, yeah. and it's a huge space, and everybody rose to the challenge. So, thank you again. Yes, definitely. Um, so yeah, we um, what well, just just to kind of finish things off for this evening, um, I just wanted to remind everybody um, about tomorrow. Um, obviously, the the private view the, this evening has has been the first um, event of the weekend, um, but we've got a full day of events um, tomorrow as well. Um, just a reminder: we've got our AGM starts at ten, and then we've got three speakers tomorrow. Um, starting at 11 o'clock, we've got um, Naomi Watskito with um, Alita Doran and Tracy Cartledge, um, who are all uh, giving us um, a talk about the, the mosaics at Chester Cathedral. Um, some of you may have caught the um, mosaics of Chester Cathedral kind of introduction we did um, a few months ago. Um, so they really go into a lot more depth um, about the, the mosaics there. Um, so that's at 11 o'clock. Um, 12 o'clock, we've got Tessa Hunkin um, talking about the, the mosaics, um, the Hackney Mosaics project. Um, and then at two o'clock, we've got Judy Sperling um, talking about um, her mosaics connecting around a cause. Um, and then we've got a practical session with um, myself and Rachel Sager where we'll be um, making some small mosaics um, to create a community, um, a collaborative installation for BAM's next exhibition, um, which is gonna be in Chester Cathedral um, next year. Um, so if you haven't got a ticket um, and you're interested in coming along, um, they're still available. Um, and what we want to do just before we finish up is to just show you the little uh, promotional video that we've got for tomorrow, um, just to give you a flavour um, of what you've got to look forward to. So um, let's just take a look at that just now. Okay. 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 
Hello, Bam. Um, thank you very much for asking us to do this presentation. Uh, it's about the Hackney Mosaic project. Um, I'm going to talk for a little bit about the history of the project, and then my colleagues here, who are volunteers at the project, will talk a little bit about their experience. Then there'll be a slideshow where there are some pictures of the work that we've done around Hackney and elsewhere. And then at the end, there's a short film about an event we held recently um, here on Hackney Downs to celebrate the mosaic of the Hounds of Hackney Downs. The job that I haven't really talked about is the Hounds of Hackney Downs, which we started in 2018, largely supported by crowdfunding and donations from the local community. And you'll see more about this job in the short film that follows. This summer, we held a party to celebrate the Hounds of Hackney Downs. We hadn't been able to have a party last year because of the pandemic, but we were able to have one this year, which was quite good because it coincided with our 10th anniversary. Welcome to Chester Cathedral. To begin today, Naomi, Tom and Harriet of the Works Department describe their roles in conserving this beautiful building. Hello, I'm Naomi. I'm the conservator here at Chester. Uh, my responsibilities lie with conserving the building, so that can involve anything from stonework, flooring, decorative arts, decorative features of the cathedral, so mosaics, gilding, so here we are at the Baptistry Mosaic. Uh, this is located in the base of the Norman Tower. So the design is um, a sea of fish in the middle in a net. There are 51 fish and crustaceans in total. And the, they are surrounded by a wave pattern and the seven heavenly virtues um, and portraits representing the patron saints for each virtue. Hi, I'm Alita and I'm an artist in residence at Chester Cathedral. The film that we're about to show you shows the influence that that role has on my work. This is the vestibule space with its early Gothic stone columns. It's a beautiful, intimate space and this is where we'll be receiving our special guests for the private view, which will take place on the 20th of March. From the vestibule, you come through another lovely stone gothic archway and then you're here in the chapter house. This is where the Constellations exhibition will take place in the spring. Just to give you a bit of context and situate you in terms of what I'm going to be talking about, I've been making mosaics about climate change and the Anthropocene for the past seven years, almost exclusively. Um, most of my work is created by me alone in my studio and then sort of passively consumed either online or in galleries. So when I think about my work connecting people, it's very much in the sense of a unidirectional push on my part, and then that may spark a conversation between me and a viewer or between viewers and others. But there are two pieces of mine that don't really fit that mold, and it's those two pieces that I'd like to talk to you about today. So the two pieces are Baseline, which you can see on the left, and Communion on the right. Interestingly, one is part of my climate series, that's Baseline, and Communion is part of my Anthropocene series. And I didn't intentionally plan on doing a piece like this in, in both series, but it just happened to work out that way. Um, both of these pieces built connections in much more deliberate and intentional ways than, than my other work. 
but they did it differently. And I'd like to walk you through the backstory and the intent and the process for each one, and, and then explore some of the common themes that I see when, when I think about them. So hopefully that's given you a bit of a taster of um, what we've got planned for tomorrow. Um, and as I say, after the speakers, we've also got a practical um, mosaic session as well. So if you don't have a ticket um, and you want to buy a ticket for tomorrow, they are still available on Eventbrite. Um, open to everybody, uh, £25 for band members and 45 for non-members. Um, and I think that's about everything we need to share with you this evening. Um, we didn't have a question and answer um, option this evening. I thought we were going to, but we don't. So um, if anybody has any burning questions, sorry, um, we couldn't answer them this evening. Um, there will be a question and answer option for, for the events tomorrow, though. Um, so, yeah, I just want to say thank you, Joy, uh, for all your hard work in organising the exhibition, getting everything off the ground and getting it all looking really good. Um, and for, for sharing some little photos, particularly in your background this evening, even though you could be in the gallery. Um, yeah. You're very welcome. It's been a it's been a pleasure. And thank you, Rachel, um, for supporting me through the whole process. Oh, you're very welcome. So, uh, yeah, thanks, everyone, for joining us. And we'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Okay, good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.